Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Darvin Dees Um You've seen me here before at the museum. Uh, normally, I am behind the camera, uh, but today I am in front of the camera. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm a local artist. Um, I'm Navajo. Uh, I work in various mediums. Um, I'm a, I define myself as a multimedia artist. Um, and I'm from White Cone, Arizona. Um, so yeah, this is some of my art. Um, I've been doing this pretty much my whole life. Um, so behind me, you can see a collection of my work. Um, as you can see, I work in many mediums um, and in many different styles from collage to screen printing to regular painting. Um, I also have dove into a little bit of fashion. Um, and this one was at Indian Market as well. So. Um, this is a good collection of my work that I brought here to the museum. Um, so yeah, um, right now I'm gonna be demonstrating. Um, what I like to do is paint over stuff and thankfully my artwork is very forgiving. Um, so I can, again, work on many uh, surfaces. Um, and there is no particular style that I try to go for. Um, one of the lessons that I've been taught is to not think about stuff. Um, I mean, obviously think about stuff, but don't think about what you're doing as far as artwork goes. Um, a lot of my inspiration came from other native artists as well as um, some historical artists. Um, so that's my motto today, it's just not to think. So yeah, you'll be seeing me work with the um, whole range of different paints, obviously some from Walmart, uh, we got some from Michaels. Um, I know also be seeing me work with a lot of different tools. Um, Again, I don't consider myself using uh, specific tools. Um, so you'll see, be seeing me working with everything from a paintbrush to some markers um, to some tape. So let's just get into it. <laughs> we have two questions already. Yeah. First is why acrylic? Why acrylic? You know, acrylic for me is really forgiving. Um, I know it stains a lot of stuff, but it's also very colorful. Um, so when you see me smear it here, it covers a lot of area with very little paint. Um, and obviously it's very vibrant. Um, and that's another thing I think my artwork really, um, really shows is the vibrancy. Um, so I work with a lot of vibrant colors and I never really try to mix. Uh, but when I do mix, I do mix brighter, brighter colors. Which artists in particular inspire you the most? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, there's an art collective here in town. Um, so it's Art of the People, and they have, oh gosh, they maybe have 20 something members. Um, Bahi Senior, uh, you got Randall Wilson, who's actually shirt I'm wearing right now. Uh, Randall Wilson, you got Kyle Yazi, um, and a lot of native artists. Um, and the reason why they inspire me is because they've taught me a lot of phil philosophical ideas. Um, such as don't think about like what you're doing. Um, also, some of the Navajo uh, philosophies of balance and and uh, harmony. So uh, that's where I get a lot of my inspiration from. Um, and usually, I tr I used to study American art, um, you know, in high school and the in the beginning of college. Um, so I do grab inspiration from people like Jackson Pollock or um, Andy Warhol and um, a lot of the expressionists. Um, a lot of my work necess isn't necessarily clean. Have you always been in art? Are there other artists in your family? You know, my mom is an artist. Um, her name's Vivian Dischini, and she actually demonstrated here before. Um, and she took me to many art shows. Um, I've been associated with the museum for about, probably, maybe, pro I'm going to say my whole life, uh, just because I don't really remember any early memories of the museum. Um, but she used to drag me along the art shows. You know, I'd actually be sitting in a gallery over there, uh, the geology gallery, with my mom behind her booth when we would sell at the Navajo show. Um, and you know, as a kid, you, you don't want to sit in one place for eight hours. So of course I explored and uh, explored the museum and explored different artists. Um, and the thing about the museum during the Navajo show is they always invite um, artists to demonstrate. And because of that, I've, it's really expanded my um, artis artistic talents. Um, originally, I used to weave. My mom used to, um, used to make me weave. And I would weave rugs. And um, you know, I won a couple awards here just for um, weaving as a youth. Um, 
And I kind of strayed away from that. Um, so yeah, now I'm painting. <laughs> so tell us about what you're doing exactly. So what I'm doing is just trying to get a base coat on my canvas. Um, I guess in any, in any style that you choose, you sort of have to start with a uh, first coat of paint. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm just laying, layering some colors that will uh, be my first layer. Um, and really, like I said, I'm not really thinking about it. Um, blues and purples seem to be my favorite colors to use, um, as you can probably tell behind me. Um, so what I'm really just doing is trying to get a sense of the color palette um, on the canvas and just trying to add color so that no white spaces show, so. <laughs> um, and like I said, I don't usually work in one tool. Um, I'll have stuff like a spray bottle to maybe spray um, the paint around. And a lot of the times I'll actually use my fingers, um, which is honestly very taboo. I get taboo in the art world. Um, I've heard artists say like, oh, hey, you're supposed to be really clean while you work and you're supposed to be very prestigious. And uh, you know, I think all, art is all about expression and it, it should be really democratic. So um, I believe that anyone should, should express their, their thoughts through art. What is that tool you're using? This tool actually was originally for screen printing. And for those of you who don't know what screen printing is, um, it's a printing process that allows me to squeeze ink or paint through, um, through a mesh. And that mesh has holes in it to allow the ink through. Um, so some of the artworks that I experimented with uh, silk screening is actually just this one. And uh, that's about it. I swear I have more. Um, but in the beginning of my art career, I made a lot of these. I'd probably say close to 50 or 60. Um, all of them sold, but this one's actually my mom's and I borrowed it from her. Um, so yeah, I started off doing stuff like this and you can see the, the influence of my past work with my new work. Um, obviously, I still try to stick with the, with the expressionist strokes here. Um, and as I moved on in my art career, I started to um, experiment with different materials and different mediums. Um, as you can see, I pasted these images on there. Um, I didn't paint them, and that was a, a choice I made. Um, and these pieces just celebrate the, the humanity that a lot of people um, don't usually see in indigenous people. Um, and, it's, and it's really celebrating our, my, my past history, uh, my ancestors, the people before me. Um, and so, yeah, I started experimenting with uh, pictures, just pasting them on a canvas. Um, and as soon as I got comfortable with pasting pictures on a canvas um, using um, copy paper, I started to paste really weird things on canvases. Like um, if you see in this piece, there's a Walmart bag, um, a Walmart plastic bag, and then there's a Bluebird flower bag like pasted on there. Um, <laughs> and that's just sort of something I tried to develop myself. But what I plan to do with this now is to paste some images on there. Um, but we gotta let the, the canvas dry a little bit. So yeah, right now I can introduce some of my materials that I'm gonna use to paste. I have everything in a Folgers can just cause I grab it from my kitchen. But <laughs> uh, what I got here is essentially just a mixture of glue and water. This texture is very uh, loose, but it's also very fitting for, um, for pasting images on the canvas. Um, one thing I also experimented with while in college was street art. Um, and I like the process of street art, of it being out in the open for anyone to see. Um, and from those experiences creating street art and actually putting stuff up on the street, um, I've started to incorporate that in my artwork as well. I should have bought a hair dryer because this would have dried a lot faster. And the reason why I need it to be dry is because I don't want any of the color to be transferred on any of the images or stuff I paste on this canvas. One thing I try to capture is a moment in time. I try to document um, either the history or the social or the social atmosphere of, um, of my tribe. Um, like in this piece, you know, you're capturing the, the life of a Navajo. You have the landscapes and you have the bluebird flower bags, obviously the sheep and some of the words and that all is very relevant to my culture. Um, and a little bit of background knowledge as well is I didn't really grow up on the res. Um, probably around age six or seven, um, I moved into Flagstaff. Um, 
and so I didn't really grow up on the res. Um, obviously, I go back to the res uh, now and then because that is my home, but that's also something you should keep in mind is that I really grew up in the city. A lot of the influences that I have come from the city, um, and so my work sort of speaks to the contemporary ways of life, you know, of, of me. Um, it's really a reflection of my identity and, and what I've experienced in life, so. <laughs> and one thing I can show you while this dries is I actually prepared another canvas um, last night. And in this canvas, I sort of did the same process. Exactly what I did here is I smeared paint, I put my first layer on, and I pasted some images. Um, I was gonna show you how to paste something like this bluebird flower bag on the canvas, but we'll wait until that dries. Um, and obviously I posted a picture on here. Um, I actually did this this morning. Um, and another thing I like to do besides pasting bluebird flower bags and images on my canvas is pasting trash. Um, <laughs> it's funny, my, my mom actually had Del Taco last night. And I was like, give me your bag. And so I dug in the trash and I, she was like, what are you doing? And I uh, dug in the trash and I ripped up the, the bag that, she, that the food came in. And she was like, okay, well, what are you doing with that? And I just slapped it on and pasted it there. Um, and again, you can take that in any, in any way you want. Um, I try to incorporate a lot of uh, consumer culture in my work uh, for contextual reasons. And I also just think it's funny. Um, you know, and it's interesting to, to use stuff you usually throw away and to add it to something that's gonna be immortalized into perpetuity is just a funny concept to me. So you have another question. Yeah. Where do you find the pictures that you add to your canvases? Good question, and I forgot to talk about that. Um, the pictures that I use on my canvases come from either archives or uh, public domain sites. Um, I run into problems where people have told me, oh, you shouldn't use this picture because blah, blah, blah. Um, but actually, you know, it's a picture that I get, got off of um, an archive or a library and just decided to use on my artwork. Do you try to tell a story with your work or let the piece speak for itself? I try to let the piece speak for itself um, because I think art is very subjective. Um, it's hard to put a narrative with a piece just because, um, I don't know, it's, it's hard to tell people what to think. And so letting them think on their own is just really the best way to interpret art. Um, and that's a lot different than um, a lot of other artists that I know. Because other artists will um, include a story with their piece. But really, I just think the piece should speak for itself. And like I said, um, I don't necessarily like to be clean. Um, I think being a little bit messy adds a lot to a piece. So adding this green to this bluebird flower bag uh, could really add texture as well as, um, you know, just a playful motif on, on what should be art. <laughs> How much time do you typically spend on this? I usually spend, oh gosh, if it's very layered, um, I'll probably spend like two days working on it. Um, but pieces like these, I like to produce fast, just because it's very, well, one, it's fun. And two, it, when you work fast, it really adds a lot of, um, a lot of motion and texture to your piece, which I really like. Um, these pens are amazing. Um, these I use in basically all of my artwork. Um, they help me a lot and um, they're oil-based, so they're pretty permanent. <laughs> Um, and if I had to choose a tool uh, to use for the rest of my life, I'd use these because these work wonders. Um, though they bleed a lot, so you kind of have to be careful. Um, and what I like to do with these, this one's dry actually. What I like to do with these is test them out before I actually use them just because they'll bleed when you try to, when you try to get them to start. So I always have an extra piece of paper lying around. Um, and one thing I learned while in my art classes is to always bring attention to what you're trying to convey. Um, in this case, this woman and child are really standing out to me. So what I'm going to do is outline them. Um, another aspect of my art is it's not hard. Um, 
Creating art should never be hard. It should always be very fun and enjoyable. Um, and if you make a mistake, then, oh well, you can always paint over it. So yeah, all these materials, materials you can really find in any art store. Um, like I said, I'm not very particular on the mediums that I use. Um, like any artist, I'm always experimenting with other materials and, and mediums um, to help create my artwork. Um, let's see, come on. Um, and like I said, I'm just gonna keep adding more layers to this piece. Um, maybe some, some pink to complement the other pink. And again, I'm not really thinking about what I'm doing. It sounds really bad, but <laughs> I, I think thinking really ruins the, the artistic experience. You mentioned you have dabbled in fashion. Yes. So other than your 1868 jacket, what other fashion design have you done? So because I work with such weird mediums, um, you know, I've had that 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 um, drive my whole life. In high school, I created a dress out of playing cards. I've oh god, made like a popcorn skirt. Like I've I made a skirt, and then there's like popcorn underneath. Um, I've made like a top out of movie tickets. Um, it, I consider it fashion, but it's also sort of sculpture and fine art. Come on. And let me check if that other canvas is, is dry, just because I actually want you guys to see me doing, doing something other than painting. Um, I mean, I could paste some more images on here. Um, but one thing I wanted to add after I added some of these layers is um, some stencils. And the stencils I brought today are ones that I've had for years. Um, so I have the sheep one, um, which I made in college. Um, it's actually laser, laser cut. Uh, one of my friends was in one of those graphic, or those technology classes. Um, and I said, oh, hey, can you laser cut me some sheep? And he was like, okay. Um, so I, I got this out of it and I use it all the time. Um, I think I actually, yeah, I used it in this piece. Um, if you wanna see, so. And then I, like I said, I recycle a lot of my artwork. Um, so if you can see on the border here, <laughs> I actually did some prints on this, um, and this was once a piece of art. Um, and you can see from the back, it was a Canson illustration board. Um, so I like to recycle a lot of my art materials just because, you know, artists aren't always the richest. Um, and I cut these out with exacto and exacto knives, um, and I try to use it as a as a stencil. So maybe we can head outside later um, after this dries and and actually spray paint a little bit um, because that'll add, add a cool texture to this piece. Uh, let's see. Is there any other questions? Do I, why do I include a lot of consumerist imagery, iconography in my work? Um, I think a lot of it is because I grew up in the city um, and I was always sort of surrounded by these uh, materials, you know, I was always at Fry's, or I was always at Walmart, uh, or I always, you know, bought stuff. You know, there's a lot of um, a lot of influences throughout my life that that made me use consumer products. Um, I also think that consumer products are really, really wasteful, um, and why not, you know, instead of letting these go in the trash, just use them in my artwork. Um, and what I like to use as well, like I said, trash. Um, I got this from my kitchen before I left to demonstrate here today. I'm sure my mom's looking for it. Um, but I got this bag here, um, and I'll use that at some point. Um, I also have some newspapers. I was going to use these just to cover my, my, uh, my space while spray painting. Um, but I can also cut these up and use them in the canvas as well. Um, and newspapers are really nice because they do have a lot of ads in them. Um, I don't know where any ads are now. So like, oh my gosh. I swear there's ads, like this Bash's ads at the bottom. Normally I'll cut this out and use it in an image. I actually think I used some newspaper clippings in this one. 
in this piece of art I've done. Um, like you can see, I started with this bottom layer of blues um, and then like added some purples and pinks um, and white spiders on the top. Um, and again, I cut out some images from a newspaper. Um, and so that layering really, really adds a lot to your piece. Um, and that's what I've just learned over the years uh, playing around. Um, and what I'm gonna do next is choose an image for this piece. Um, what I like to do is print images out, um, a couple images out at a time while I'm at like UPS or Kinko's um, and just have them around because you know I get inspiration from all of, all of these images. Um, and normally when I wanna make a piece of art, I'll just grab one of these and, and go for it. Um, so yeah, and oh my gosh, I'm making a mess here. Uh, so I'm gonna choose this image. Um, and there's nothing special that I do. Like I said, really anyone could find these images online or through an archive um, and cut them out and then paste them onto a canvas. Um, I really haven't taught any youth, but really, again, anyone can do this from small children to even elders. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in five years? Ooh, where do I see myself in five years? You know, I see myself working at an institution. Um, I mean, I already work for, for a museum here, so I see myself still working at a museum um, and hopefully creating artwork. Um, it's really hard to create artwork while you're working um, a nine to five job. Um, and that's something that goes along with the philosophies that I've learned through other artists is you gotta have this balance. Um, so to answer your question, I think in five years, I see myself balancing both my artistic life as well as my professional life, um, hopefully working at a museum. <laughs> We've also had a question asking for a little bit more information about your skateboard piece. Ooh, yeah. Um, so my skateboard piece, like talking about it or talking about what I made it for. Yes. <laughs> um, so I've noticed that a lot of indigenous artists have dabbled into making skateboards. Um, obviously because of the exhibit here that started here at the Museum Pivot, uh, curated by Duane Coyolena um, and Landis Bahi. Um, artists started painting on skateboards, and I was like, oh, why not? I have a skateboard lying around, so I just decided to, to make one. And you know, <laughs> it's funny because McDonald's is the main image um, on this piece, but I really meant for it to represent like um, a Harrison Begay painting. Um, you could probably tell by like the birds and the landscape. Um, but this, this painting is called Can't to McDonald's. Um, I kind of find it funny that there's a big McDonald's arch down the road from Monument Valley. So this one's basically dry. Um, another trick that I've learned that probably isn't very formal is if a painting's not dry, just dry it yourself. You know, as I remove layers and undried paint, it'll reveal like this kind of stuff. Um, so if I like wipe this paint off, it'll reveal, reveal some cool textured layers. Um, one thing I also use is I don't know where I put it because I'm not too organized. Um, I have palette knives, um, and those palette knives really help me by subtracting layers on my canvas. Um, I actually don't know where I put it. That's weird. Right here. So yeah, these are palette knives. Uh, traditionally, they're used to either mix paint or pick paint up. You can. What I like to do is just scrape my uh, my canvas. So you took some blue off there. Um, and you can even reapply that to add more texture. Um, but the, you know, the underpainting that I originally had is showing now. Um, but it's very cool because it adds a lot of depth. Um, and again, I'm not very patient. Um, so just drying it myself seems like a good option. <laughs> um, and like I said, this Folgers can has a mix of water and um, and glue um, that I made myself. It's regular Elmar's glue. Um, really, I learned that from a kindergarten class. <laughs> uh, what did I use? Where's my brush? Okay. Um, and again, when you're gonna 
paste stuff onto a canvas. Um, I've learned this the hard way. Be sure to use a clean brush. Um, a clean brush will allow you to not transfer any paint uh, while you're actually like pasting it onto this image. Um, a couple years ago, I was creating this big, big commission piece, and I went to go paste, oh God, like a five foot um, uh, image on the canvas, and I just, I painted downward, and it was just blue. Um, so you're gonna start by painting, in, or not painting, by applying blue to an area that you think your image is gonna go. Um, it's okay to estimate. I don't necessarily always measure, um, but it's good to get a good thin layer of, of glue on there just to be prepared to lay your image down. And I actually think I got some blue on my, oh well, okay. I only have an hour, so. Um, and this medium isn't so forgiving. Um, so just really try to take your time if you ever plan on, on making a piece like this. And as you can see, you know, pasting an image on there adds a lot to the piece. Um, I probably won't do anything in this area as far as painting goes. Um, and another thing to notice is this area, these areas are all sort of crinkling up. Um, Honestly, anyone's natural reaction to that is to just smooth it out or like get rid of the air bubbles. Um, but what I've learned is to just leave it. <laughs> um, let it sit for a bit because it will, it, will, um, it will go down. Some paint with my hands and just work it on the canvas. And again, I'm not trying to make a narrative to this piece. Like these, this couple doesn't have any relationship to a blue word flower bag, and you know the stuff that I add on this isn't gonna tell a story. But maybe it connects with someone. Um, and what I'm doing now is actually adding um, a lot more glue to the edges. Um, this is also something I learned the hard way: is um, once you have something pasted on a canvas, the only way it's gonna stay is if you glue the sides down very, very meticulously and very, very thickly. I'll actually talk about my piece here, my jacket behind me. Um, this jacket I made uh, as a fashion piece for Indian market um, and in big letters it says 1868 and that's just to, to represent the, the ending of the long walk. Um, and you know, I, I, that's another thing I like to do is I like to put a lot of references in my work um, that people you normally won't get. Um, I'll actually lay this down on the table so you guys can see it better. Um, but I use like Skoden and uh, obviously Hajan, um, Balance, uh, Res for Life, you know, <laughs> part of the graffiti culture. Um, and something I put on here too is a little nod to what I was always taught as a child is the universe is walking with me. Um, and that's that's incorporated in a lot of traditional songs and prayers. Um, and what that's supposed to mean is like, as you're walking or living your daily life, um, you're always supposed to have these like conceptions of hajan or balance and like unity and just very, very positive vibes you're supposed to have throughout life. This is my butterfly stencil. Um, what I can do with it is honestly paint over it. Um, this is another method I've, that I've tried in the past. Um, that works kind of well. If I can find another brush, come on. Okay. Um, and honestly, I don't even have a palette with me, so I'm just gonna use the top of my painting can. Um, and really, as you've seen, I don't really choose my colors very wisely. Um, and not because I don't care, but because um, sometimes it's just best to not think about stuff and just let it happen. Come on. Come on. Oh, I guess you can kind of see them. Um, and the nice thing about doing this type of technique is you see I left so much paint on this butterfly um, and that paint's eventually gonna dry up and, uh, and take on some texture. Well, thank you everyone and uh, have a great day. <laughs>